Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. In this tutorial I'm gonna talk about my skin shader for Blender Cycles. I'm gonna explain how everything works and how to use masks to get the best results possible. And without further ado, let's jump right into Blender. So if you open the Blend file, you're greeted with this screen. We'll go over to the shading tab um, to see the notes and just have a look at it. Um, I know it's not that cleaned up, but it does the job and I'm not a professional at any means with notes and especially grouping notes. So yeah, I did my best though. Um, these color things are just different skin shades that you can copy. They don't uh, do anything. So yeah, you can basically just ignore them. Before you use the skin shader on your model, you should UV unwrap it. That just makes sure that when you transform the model, with uh, bones um, that uh, the textures don't slide. So yeah, do that first and then you can put the material on it. Um, yeah, let's just go into material preview and have a look at it. So yeah, let's just have a look at the shader. Um, it all starts with our base color. It's really just an RGB value, so it doesn't do anything. Um, on the top, we have all our nodes um, influencing the color of the shader. And down here, we got the nodes um, influencing the bump. So the 3D uh, space, basically. So yeah, I've grouped different, uh, different categories. We've got our blemishes that are just red and blue spots under your skin to break up the base color of the skin, basically. Then I have to zoom out a bit, I think. I'll disable this mesh. Um, yeah, next up, we've got a layer of red spots on top of it. It doesn't do really much. I don't know if we'll see it, probably not. Um, so just, I I'll increase it um, like really high so we can see it. It's just some more yeah, red spots and emptied to break up the skin even more. Next up, we got our small veins. It's no, no like uh, main veins and stuff um, that you can see at your hands or stuff like that. It's just, uh, again, really small things building up some, yeah, and breaking up the textures. So it's like these things and stuff popping up everywhere. Um, for almost every node, I've added things like strength. So if you're saying, I, I want to see more of the veins, um, you can go like uh, here for the veins uh, strength and say like, um, let's increase it. So it's like, she's really, <laughs> she's really having a bad infection or something like that. Um, yeah, but we'll just leave it at one. Yeah, it's basically just uh, stuff like that. You can also increase the scale of the veins. If you say like, I want uh, even smaller ones. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even see them anymore. Hello? Ah, oh, there they are. So yeah, you can scale it how you want. Even bigger. Um, you can scale everything to your liking. Just play around a bit with the settings, um, have a look what looks good for you. And yeah, next up we got our molds. It's like with the veins and every uh, thing before. They're just there to break up um, the texture space. We've got them everywhere here and there. Um, they're nicely scattered around. Last but not least, we got our pore stirred. Um, so you won't see much at the moment, but if we increase it to like one, ah, we first have to plug in the in the color node for that. It'll take a second. So yeah, that's that's the most extreme thing. I don't know you'll ever need it, but it's just some uh, really strong plaque heads. <laughs> um, but yeah, some of it like I, I think I took two or something. Um, may be nice for your model um, if it has something like around the cheeks and stuff. Play around with it and have a look what fits your model the best. 
Um, so let's look down here for the bump. Um, first, we've got some yeah, overall skin bump. So yeah, we've got a basic skin texture. It's just like cells and stuff and also some more noise to, to break up the uniformity of the mesh. Um, yeah, it's, it's nothing too crazy. Um, there's some tutorials about that. Um, and after that we got our pore layer. It doesn't look too great in, in the preview view, um, but in the rendered view it looks quite nice. Yeah, let's talk about texture masks. If we plug that just in again. Oh, and I forgot. There's a freckles uh, node group up here. I, I put it further up because uh, yeah, it's not a regular and not a common thing. Um, some people have it, some don't, so it's like optional up there. <laughs> um, but you can plug it in. Um, yeah, we'll have freckles. <laughs> Yay! Um, and also down here, I've implemented a goosebump node. It's basically just um, inverting our pores, um, so you won't have goosebumps at the face, obviously. But if we go like down here and do the goosebump slider to a one. This should invert our pores. Ah, now it's loaded in. Nice. And now we've got some nice goosebumps. Again, it doesn't look too great in the in the preview uh, view, but um, in the render it will look great. Let's talk about masks. I'll put some inputs down here for the pores and up here for the freckles um, because uh, everything else I call it um, the skin base um, that's uh, just stuff like that um, that's like common and scattered like almost all over the skin so it doesn't matter where it's nice to have everywhere that doesn't matter you don't have to mask or do manually nothing but if it gets to things like uh, bigger pores and things like freckles you'll probably not want them like all over the place so you probably just want some freckles around the around the cheeks and the nose uh, maybe up here a bit. I'll explain now how that works. So it's basically like in many many other programs for example Photoshop or anything white is show and black means hidden. So you can control this by either picking this value but then it's applied for um, the whole body or um, we can create a mask for it. I already put this image texture here. Just click new, create a mask with black because we won't have uh, freckles all over the body, but like in just some parts. So we'll leave it black. We can name it like a freckles mask. The resolution of the texture uh, really doesn't have to be too high, but uh, like, uh, I'll do a 2K texture for now, um, leave it black as I said. So yeah, just leave it like that, create the texture. And now if we plug it in, we'll see there's no freckles because our whole texture is black. Now we want to paint some of that in. Um, you can either do it with your tablet or your mouse, doesn't matter. So we we'll go over to the texture painting tab and I just isolate the model and we'll see, all right, everything's black because that's our texture. Um, if you're going over to the texture painting tab, um, be sure that you select um, the, the node. So um, yeah, it's automatically selected and applied. Over on the left, you see your UV with the texture applied and on the right, you see your model. I prefer to just um, close that UV tab so I can see my model fully and yeah, have just a better view on it. So now we want to paint in off freckles. We can actually go over and do this in the material preview again. So uh, because I'm recording, it's lagging a bit now, but um, we'll be okay. We'll just do like 
increase our brush strength. Now, if we paint in our freckles. So um, that will look horrible now, <laughs> I guarantee you, um, because I'm not working with my tablet and it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not any good, I say that. But we just want some freckles around here. Maybe let's increase the radius to like 150. Switch the colors uh, with the shortcut X. Uh, just decrease the strength to 0.5. And now we can like fade them out nicely. Like so. Yeah, the performance is not really good. It's really rushed. Anyways, let's go down a bit more and just paint in some more freckles. So yeah, that's how the masks work basically. Um, and the good thing with this workflow is that you can later go back and say like, oh, I, I like the placing of the freckles like but like they're a bit small and if you would have painted them in with the texture you like basically have to do the real uh, the, the, the whole thing again again um, but now you can just like um, go in and say oh yeah I want the freckles to be more intense from the color all right that's nice okay that's a bit much I, I say that um, or you can say yeah I want less freckles I want them to be more subtle. Or you can say, oh, I, I, I'd like them to be bigger. You can go in like that. So that's a nice thing. Everything's um, a non-destructive workflow. It's basically really adjustable in the hindsight. So if you go back a few days later and say, my God, what were my thoughts on that? Like, why did I make them so small? I'd like to increase them. Go back, type in dot seven, and you've got them bigger. The same process for the pores. You can just plug it into the factor, create a new texture, again, black and white, pores mask. Um, we'll plug it into the factor. Boop, and the pores are gone. No pores. Again, it's, it's just a thing because you won't have like as visible pores on like the neck or uh, on the inner side of your arms and stuff. So you'll mostly want them on the cheeks and stuff like that. Uh, you don't want pores on the lips as well. So again, you go over to the texture paint if you want to see um, a better view of your mask. You can always go to the viewport shading tab. And here we'll see the mask we painted. My god, it's horrible. <laughs> so, yeah. And now I forgot to click the image node over there. So we're again at the freckles mask. But we can also switch over here at the texture slots. Um, we'll do that. And now everything's black again. And we can paint in our pores. So, yeah. It's again just where we want our pores. Like some here. Some nice pores around the cheeks. Um, yeah, and that's the workflow. And now, if we go over, we can see, oh, there's some pores showing up. So yeah, that's the workflow. Um, I hope I explained the masking um, good enough. Um, yeah. And yeah, if you, if you want a bit better masks, um, like that's horrible. We can we can deactivate the specular lighting so that's that's not really looking nice. Um, you can always go over here and add a texture mask. Um, you'll go over to texture, you have to pick it here, and then go over and pick something nice like clouds. You can scale it up a bit. Hmm. Other way around. 
So yeah, and then you can use this texture. If you go back to your settings, you'll have to throw it out of the texture thing again. So it's just a mask. And then you go in and nicely blend everything like so. It, become, it becomes just way softer and nicer of a mask. So yeah, that's just a quick bonus tip. <laughs> um, you don't have it to do it this way, but I feel like this is a nice way of blending areas. So that's way better than before, way more natural and stuff. So yeah. Looks nice for now. Um, so yeah, that's about it for the tutorial. I hope I explained everything good enough. Um, and yeah, have fun with this setup. Oh, by the way, um, if you want to have a look into the notes, uh, how I set it up, you can always go to the group, just press tab and have a look into it. Um, there's everything listed. Um, yeah, you can play around with these values too, um, to your liking, if you have a bit more of an understanding from the notes. And uh, yeah, have fun, bye.